Hi everyone, we're talking about weird or atypical side effects of metformin use. So these are going to be side effects that are generally not talked about, but they can often happen and can happen more frequently than we may expect. So before we talk about those weird or atypical side effects, let's talk about what metformin is and what it does. So metformin is a medication used to lower or reduce blood glucose levels. So it's going to be one of the first, if not the first medication that's going to be prescribed for type 2 diabetes. So when patients reach the threshold of type 2 diabetes diagnosis, or even if they have pre-diabetes, patients can be prescribed with medication. So it's going to be one that we see very frequently, but in some cases we may not be able to use this medication. And we'll discuss this briefly later on when we talk about one of the more significant atypical side effects of metformin use. So how does metformin actually lower blood glucose levels? It actually does this by several mechanisms. One is that it can inhibit gluconeogenesis in the liver. So gluconeogenesis is going to be the production of new glucose from non-glucose substrates. So it makes sure that our blood glucose levels don't go too low. So that's one thing it does. Metformin inhibits gluconeogenesis. It also inhibits glucose uptake from the gastrointestinal system. So we're not absorbing glucose properly. So we're going to excrete it in our stool. And it also increases insulin sensitivity. So it does this by increasing the activity of the insulin receptor. So the insulin receptor is more sensitive to insulin and thereby the cell can bring up glucose. Now, some of the more common side effects of metformin use include the following. Diarrhea. Diarrhea is going to be the most common and the most complained about side effect of metformin use. This is going to occur in a dose dependent manner. So as we increase the dose of metformin more and more, we're going to have watery diarrhea. Oftentimes a clinician will prescribe metformin at a particular dose, the patient will have diarrhea, then the diarrhea will subside over a few weeks, then the clinician will increase the metformin dose, they may have diarrhea again, and then eventually that side effect will subside. So. Diarrhea is going to be something that's related to the dose of metformin, and it's also going to oftentimes resolve on its own over time. It is likely that the metformin is changing some of the gut microbiota, and over time we get adapted to that particular gut microbiota, and then that's why we have a resolution of diarrheal symptoms. Related side effects of metformin that are common as well include flatulence, stomach pain, upset stomach, those types of symptoms. And we can also have, in some rare cases, hypoglycemia. This makes sense if we're reducing absorption of glucose or we're increasing the sensitivity of insulin receptors or we're inhibiting gluconeogenesis. It's possible that we can have hypoglycemia, which is a low blood glucose level. This is mostly going to occur if we're taking higher doses of metformin and we're fasting or if we are exercising. So high doses with fasting and exercise, we may have more likely a hypoglycemia. Along with hypoglycemia, patients can also have headaches. That can be a common side effect of many medications. And patients can also have diaphoresis or excessive sweating. So the excessive sweating can occur from metformin and can be related to hypoglycemia. Now let's talk about some of the weird or atypical side effects of metformin use. Some of these include heartburn and dyspepsia. So there can be increased acid reflux and epigastric pain. So epigastric pain to be above the belly button, sort of in the upper abdomen. Chest discomfort can occur along with this. And the reason that this occurs is because metformin may act as a weak histamine agonist. And histamine is part of a particular pathway in the stomach that causes the release of gastric acid. So this is the reason why we can see heartburn in some cases of metformin use. We can also see taste changes occurring as well. So altered or reduced taste can be a common side effect of metformin use. So oftentimes the patient's going to describe a metallic taste in their mouth. And this metallic taste can be a lingering effect. So even if they've had a dose and haven't taken a dose for many hours, they can still have this lingering effect in their mouth. And the reason that this occurs is because metformin has been shown to be excreted in the saliva and it is detectable. It can be in detectable amounts in the saliva. So that's the reason why we can have this sort of weird taste, often described as metallic taste in the mouth. And this excretion in the saliva can continue to occur at a slow level or a slow rate, even many, many hours after the last dose of metformin. And we can also see, in some cases, acid and or sour taste if they have heartburn. Now, another important side effect of metformin use is respiratory infections. 
Now, there does seem to be an increased risk of respiratory tract infections in some patients on metformin. Oftentimes, these can be upper respiratory tract infections, so, you know, common cold. Bacterial pneumonia also seems to be something that occurs more frequently in patients on metformin. And then COPD hospitalization is also more common in patients with metformin. These are some preliminary data, so we'll have to wait to see if there is any more data to support some of this. But in some patients who are very, very sick, metformin may actually increase the risk of more severe respiratory tract infections and along with increased requirements of ventilation. So again, in very sick patients who have lung disease, metformin may increase the risk of respiratory tract infections, especially some of these more severe cases that end up in the hospital, for instance. We may also see rhinitis occurring in some patients with metformin. So this is an inflammation of the nose. Patients can have rhinorrhea, runny nose, nasal congestion. They may feel like they need to sneeze. This is something that can occur in some patients as well, although going to be more uncommon. Skin infections are also something that has been noted to potentially be associated with metformin use. So metformin may increase risk of some skin infections in some patients. So there may be increased association of metformin use in the following, including cellulitis and recurrent cellulitis and foot infections. This is going to be very important to think about because most often patients who are diabetic are going to be on metformin. So this is more likely to occur probably in more severe diabetic patients. So very severe. So again, it's always important to check our feet. If you've got diabetes, check your feet regularly. So this is, again, some newer data. So we'll have to wait to see if there's more data to support some of this. But this is something to think about, especially in patients with severe diabetes. Myalgias are also another potential side effect of metformin use. So myalgias are muscle aches and pains. In some patients, they may feel that their muscles are tender to touch. And the reason is because metformin may lead to muscle wasting. So it's been found in some models that metformin can lead to muscle wasting through expression and activity of myostatin, AMPK, and FOXO3. So some of these potential proteins, the expression of these proteins are elevated, and this seems to be related to muscle wasting. We can also see weakness occurring in some patients. This is going to be referred to as asthenia. So the muscle weakness and fatigue may occur with metformin use. So along with the weakness, so patients may just feel a little bit fatigued. This may be due to what we just mentioned, the metformin-induced muscle wasting. Now, another important side effect of metformin that's not often talked about is vitamin B12 deficiency. So deficiency of vitamin B12 is associated with long-term use of metformin. This seems to be pretty consistent in many patients as the length of time that they've been using metformin increases, they're more and more likely to have a deficiency of vitamin B12. So after a year, perhaps after a few years, this is something to look out for. The reason is because metformin reduces the absorption of vitamin B12 at a particular part of the gastrointestinal system known as the terminal ileum. This is where vitamin B12 is absorbed and some other fat-soluble vitamins are absorbed here as well. This vitamin B12 deficiency may be related to a calcium deficiency. So there is an association between vitamin B12 deficiency and calcium deficiency. So in some cases, if a patient has calcium deficiency, if we were to supplement them with calcium, their vitamin B12 levels may also improve as well. And because they have a vitamin B12 deficiency, they can have signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency. These can include many different signs and symptoms, including macrocytic anemia. So macrocytic anemia essentially means an anemia, so a low hemoglobin level or a low red blood cell level, where the red blood cells are large. Macro meaning large, so their MCV, their mean corpuscular volume is larger, so it's over 100. So for those who are more interested in this, vitamin B12 deficiency can cause a megaloblastic macrocytic anemia, meaning that there's a problem with DNA synthesis. And along with anemia, we can see issues with fatigue, pallor, and in more severe cases, there may be issues with dyspnea or more shortness of breath, especially on exertion. We can also see depression as well. So vitamin B12 deficiency can be an important cause of what we would call a reversible depression. Patients just don't feel well. They feel fatigued. They have a low mood. So when patients present with signs and symptoms of depression, they may not have a major depressive disorder, which would be a psychiatric diagnosis. They may have a vitamin B12 deficiency. So it's important to do blood work on those patients. 
And in older patients, patients with a vitamin B12 deficiency can have what we would call a reversible dementia as well. So the low mood, the fatigue can also suppress some of their cognitive functioning, making it look like they have a bit of dementia, but actually they have a vitamin B12 deficiency, and that would be something that could be corrected if we were to supplement them with vitamin B12. And then also on top of all of this, a vitamin B12 deficiency can lead to neurological symptoms, such as peripheral neuropathy. So numbness, tingling sensations on the extremities, for instance, so feet, legs, this can happen as well. And there's some other side effects. If you want more information, please check my lesson on vitamin B12 deficiency signs and symptoms. And then a very important side effect to look out for with metformin is lactic acidosis. So lactic acidosis may occur in certain patient populations taking metformin. This is actually the black box warning for this particular medication. So this is going to be rare, but it's going to be more common in particular patients. So these patient populations include the following. Liver disease patients, so patients with cirrhosis, kidney disease patients, congestive heart failure patients, and also those taking carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like topiramate, and patients over the age of 65, and those with heavy alcohol use. So all these particular patient characteristics increase the risk of lactic acidosis. So we avoid it entirely in patients with liver disease, kidney disease, congestive heart failure, and we may still see some clinicians putting patients on metformin if they are over the age of 65. It does increase the risk, and also heavy alcohol use is something that should be avoided when we're on metformin as well because of this increased risk of lactic acidosis. So lactic acidosis is where our blood essentially becomes acidic. It becomes more acidic than before the pH drops. This leads to a host of different signs and symptoms, including nausea and vomiting. And we can also see a high respiratory rate with high respiratory volumes. And this is a compensatory mechanism to deal with the acidemia. So this is something we have to look out for. Lactic acidosis with these particular patient characteristics. Please check out my other lesson on metformin side effects if you want more information on the more common side effects. And please also check out my lesson on vitamin B12 deficiency signs and symptoms as well. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.